Resolve the World, Episode 5, The Sunset Limited. Hi! Eyes closed. Ignore. Hi! Who is that? Who is here with me in this place? In this blood? Hello! Wake up, wake up, wake up! Jennifer Dash woke up. Looming over her like a colossus stood a seven-year-old girl outfitted in overalls and a big mouth far from being proportional to the rest of her face. The girl sat on the edge of the couch by Jen's stomach. Who are you? The girl inquired. Foggy-eyed, Jen opened her mouth to respond before realizing she wasn't sure how to answer. For the first time, it dawned on her that she'd never caught the boy's name. He was just the boy. Hi, I'm... I'm Jen. Who, who are you? My name's Margaret, but everyone calls me Scout. Scout? Why Scout? You know why, silly. Jen really didn't know. Not even slightly. Thankfully, Scout was a big talker. That big mouth of hers would take her far. Because of To Kill a Mockingbird, it was our mother's favorite book. And movie. Book and movie. Was? Yep, she's dead now. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I know, everyone is. Scout flailed her arms about reenacting some vaudevillian opera in her mind. She recited the play in many voices. My sincerest condolences. She was a wonderful person. So sorry you never got to know her. You have to be a big girl now for your father. la di la di la di la 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 Scout sang the last part for no apparent reason. Will you cook me some breakfast? Oh, um, sure? What do you want? Cracker Jacks. Cracker Jacks. Cooked? I like them in milk. Oh, and they're too high in the cabinet for me to grab. Atticus puts them there because he says that I'll eat them up too fast if I can grab them on my own. Atticus. That must be the father's name. Or the boy's. It sounded to Jen like more of an adult name than a teenager's. It didn't fit the boy at all. He should be a... a Brad. Or maybe a Stephen. Uh, yeah, uh, a Stephen McAllister. Something warm and grand like that, Jen thought. But I can grab them. I just have to pull over the chair and climb up on the oven. The last time I almost fell, so I think it's a better idea if you get it for me. Plus, the milk's too heavy for me to pour. I always spill it. I used to kind of like to spill it on purpose because then Salvador would lick it all up. But Salvador's dead now, too. Salvador was our dog. If Salvador ended up being a manservant in this mini-mansion, she was out of here before they forced her to be Scout's milk-lapping governess. Against the wills of her achy body, Jen got up and shimmied over to the kitchen. There, Scout said, pointing Jen toward the Cracker Jacks and Bowls. After pouring Scout's Cracker Jack cereal, the two ladies sat at either end of the kitchen table. You gonna have anything? Jen was hungry. Her stomach made her quite aware of this fact. I think I prefer my Cracker Jacks without milk. Oh, okay. Jen grabbed the box, and as a display of playful behavior, she took a handful of Jacks and smashed them into her mouth. Hey! 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 Stop that! Stop that! Jen thought she was being funny, but the stern condemnation emanating from the seven-year-old begged to differ. Jen tried to gargle out a, What? But her mouth was too full to make the T sound with her tongue. We didn't pray first. We have to pray. Ugh. And who taught you to talk with your mouth full? You're not allowed to do that in this house. Spit it out. What? I said, spit it out, young lady. There will be none of that conduct in the further house. Go on, spit it out into your hand. Go on, spit it out. Into your hand. Weirdly ashamed, Jen bashfully pushed the jacks out of her mouth into the palm of her hand. This scout was sure into proper etiquette. Now, hold out your other hand and I'll pray for us. Jen did so immediately, not wanting the drill sergeant to make her do anything else debasing. Now close your eyes and bow your head. Jen followed orders, but as all first-time prayers are apt to do, surreptitiously peeked to see what magic voodoo occurs in the midst of a real child's prayer. As far as Jen could see, Scout over there was a true believer, hands outstretched, head bowed, eyes sealed tightly shut. Dear God, thank you for this day, for this nice weather, and for this breakfast. 
Please be with Daddy today and with Atticus, and keep them both safe, all day long. And thank you for our guest today, Jen. Please nourish her body with the food she eats, and please heal her of her boo-boo. Oh! (laughs) Scout giggled and covered her laughs with her hands. Jen smiled and saw Scout staring up at her. Oh, okay, pause. You can look up now. Pause. You can pause prayers, Jen thought. Neat. I'm sorry about that. Atticus gave me orders not to talk about your head wound. I'm sorry. That was very, very impolite of me, and I should have never said that. It's okay. I'm not offended. Do you want to know how I got it? Yeah. Well, I was- Wait! 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 We didn't finish praying. Oh, goodness gracious, dearie me. We better start over. Jen watched Scout take the position again. The Cracker Jacks and Jen's hand were getting soggy and seeping through the cracks in her fingers. It would have been disgusting had she not been so amused by Scout's insistent orders. Jen bowed her head. Unpause. Dear God, thank you for this day and for this nice morning and for this breakfast and for Daddy and Atticus and Jen and breakfast. I'm sorry I pointed out Jen's injury. Please forgive me and give me a good day. And please tell Daddy to bring home a puppy when he gets back from his trip. Amen. Scout looked up at Jen. We can eat now. Scout plowed into her bowl. Jen, on the other hand, found a trash can to dispose of her soggy remnants. So are you my brother's new girlfriend? The question made Jen blush. If she were honest with herself, she'd undoubtedly respond that she'd like to be the boy's girlfriend. She'd never been anyone's girlfriend before, and she suspected that love was going to play into her formula for solving the world. So it certainly wouldn't hurt to have some experience in that arena. Before Jen could verbalize any of these thoughts, though, Scout countered with, My brother's brought lots of girls over. He's had lots of girlfriends. Oh, well, hmm. I just met your brother last night. Scout was incredulous. And he brought you over already? To meet me? Wow. He must really like you. At this, Jen's survivalist instinct clicked in. She sat back down at the kitchen table, only now she chose the seat closest to Scout. Touching her bandages, Jen was in gear now. Smiling and staring at Scout, she started in. 